A new twist tonight in the ongoing debate over the Centerpoint project. Lexington City leaders say a new development partner has shown some interest. A Madison County government employee is arrested today after Kentucky State Police say she stole more than $33,000 of government money. A Southern Kentucky community in shock tonight after the sudden death of a well-known attorney. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. After demands from Lexington City leaders and threats of legal action from the developer, there appears to be some compromise tonight on Centerpoint. A third party, unnamed, could be showing interest in the Centerpoint project. Tonight, city leaders announced they have delayed action on their demand that the Centerpoint block be filled in. So, where does the project go from here? Our Garrett Weimer is at the live desk with the new developments in our top story at 11. Garrett? Well, Sam, after all the back and forth and facing threat of a lawsuit, the city released a statement not long ago saying it will, quote, delay action on its restoration agreement with developers. That means developers don't have to fill in the construction site at this time. That announcement came just hours after a council meeting where Centerpoint nearly went unmentioned. Any discussion on the motion? There was plenty of business at Thursday's Urban County Council meeting. In particular, the downtown management district. But council members were quiet on Centerpoint. Then, just after 9 o'clock, the city announced it would not make developers fill in the construction site for now. According to a city spokesperson, that's because a new private development partner is looking into whether it wants to join the Centerpoint project. In a statement, that spokesperson says, quote, Lexington's patience is wearing thin on Centerpoint, but everyone views this as an important development to the community. We need to give this new company time to do its evaluation. This is a private project. Regardless of what any contract says or what any lawyer advises you. During the council meeting, the only mention of Centerpoint came during the public comment period when one man said making developers fill in the site would be a mistake. And they spent all this money digging it out. It would be terribly wasteful to fill it back in and then somebody have to dig the hole all over again later. It makes no sense to demand such wastefulness. At this, at this point, that situation has been avoided. The city was also able to avoid a potential lawsuit from developers. The city's news release said this will be the last statement by the city or Centerpoint developers until that new potential partner makes its decision. And as Sam said, that person or group has asked not to be named at this time. At the live desk, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Garrett, thank you. The city says that new third party will have 90 days to decide whether or not it wants to become a part of the project. Amber? She works for an agency that protects the community, but police say a Madison County woman stole more than $33,000 from it. State police arrested Madison County CSEP finance officer Tamara Phelps this afternoon. She's now facing dozens of charges, including forgery and theft. New at 11, Monique Blair is tracking the investigation. The investigation started last week after the Madison County EMA asked state police for assistance after they couldn't find some of their property. As a result of that investigation, today, Madison County EMA CSEP finance officer, 54 year old Tamara Phelps, was arrested. The initial investigation indicates that she had bought electronic items, uh, maybe some residence items, uh, had some vehicle work done. And uh, in the total of that, ended up being over $33,000. Kentucky State Police say through their investigation, they discovered Tamara Phelps forged the director's signature on 60 purchase orders and several reimbursement sheets. And that's how she was able to acquire that property, uh, oftentimes without anybody else knowing or having any kind of oversight. Phelps is charged with forgery first and theft, and in this case, they are both felonies. Trooper Robert Purdy says the initial investigation shows Phelps has been forging and stealing from the government for the past year, but the investigation is still ongoing. As long as I've been at, at the post here, uh, I don't recall us ever working a case of this nature involving any kind of governmental agency. In Madison County, Monique Blair, WKYT. 
We are told that Phelps has worked for Madison County for a long time. We reached out to her today at the Madison County Detention Center, but she declined our request for an interview. Newly filed court documents have more details about a bourbon theft ring. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office suspected the accused ringleader, Gilbert Kurtzinger, of stealing bourbon years ago. But police say they found bourbon barrels at his home earlier this year. They say more than $100,000 worth of bourbon was stolen from Wild Turkey and Buffalo Trace distilleries. Nine people were charged in the case. Two have already pled guilty. The documents also claim there was lax security at Buffalo Trace, including hinges that could be taken off a locked gate to get access to Pappy Van Winkle bourbon. Police in Lexington are releasing some new details today about what they think happened the night a University of Kentucky student was murdered. Detectives have testified during a hearing for two of the suspects in the case, Efren Diaz and Justin Smith. Those two, along with a 17-year-old, are charged with murder and robbery. Police say that last month, the three were driving around Lexington planning to rob someone. They say they spotted Jonathan Kruger and his friend Aaron Gillette on East Maxwell and robbed them at gunpoint. As the two victims handed over valuables, police say the suspects demanded more. It was at this point that Mr. Gillette and Mr. Kruger attempted to defend themselves against the two suspects. Um, and during their defense, Mr. Kruger was shot multiple times as Mr. Gillette was able to flee. Kruger later died. Police say Diaz and Smith both blamed the 17 year old for shooting Kruger. The judge sent the case on to the grand jury. Tonight, investigators believe a well-known Laurel County attorney's death is a suicide. Laurel County Sheriff John Root says Warren Scoville called him this morning saying he planned to harm himself. The sheriff and London police say they soon found Scoville behind the old Bullock Lumber Building with a gunshot wound to the head. He later died at the hospital. Scoville's friends say he'll be missed. I was shocked, totally saddened, and I've been saddened all day. And uh, my heart has not been any in any of the work I've done today. Scoville defended high-profile clients, including former state lawmaker Steve Nunn and socialite Leona Helmsley. Some showers and storms popping up across parts of the bluegrass tonight, and that could be a sign of what's to come. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Hello, Chris. Hi, Sam. Indeed, my man, that is exactly what we have in store for us over the next couple of days. It's the same old, same old pattern we've been stuck in now for the past few days. Summertime in the bluegrass state. Focus of the forecast as we roll into Friday, and you guessed it, it is more of the same across central and eastern Kentucky. Toasty temperatures and some rumbles of thunder. High temperatures tomorrow, mainly mid to upper 80s into most of central and eastern Kentucky. Could be some pockets of a slightly cooler air, similar to today, where some of those folks get under a shower or thunderstorm. Now, current temperatures have dropped into the mid and upper 60s into most areas, still 70 or a little better. Moorhead, Ashland, down into Jackson and Prestonsburg, Lexington officially at 68 degrees. Live first alert defender, nothing showing up locally, but those storms from earlier kind of coming at us from an odd direction from the southeast. So we're watching a little plume of moisture there. Another plume of moisture out across the Mississippi Valley put those two together to slow increase in storms over the next couple of days. Now your Friday forecast out the door, a touch of fog, muggy but dry, low 60s. Heat and humidity already for your lunchtime hour at 80, mid and upper 80s coming up tomorrow afternoon. Guys, the new hour by hour forecast is in. It has a little uptick in thunderstorm action for the weekend. We'll track it for you just ahead. All right, Chris, thank you. Tonight, people in Oklahoma continue to clean up the mess. A series of tornadoes left behind. Authorities say one woman died when the underground shelter she was in flooded. But they say early warning saved many lives. Adriana Diaz has the latest from Oklahoma. Residents in hard hit Bridge Creek, Oklahoma, are trying to salvage whatever they can and clean up the rest. A tornado took out Mark Crick's home and his welding shop. But he says none of that matters. It's just stuff. And, uh, you know, it can all be replaced. And as long as nobody gets hurt and families all together, we're good. 51 reported tornadoes barreled through Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and North Texas late Wednesday and early Thursday. Most residents got to safety early, but 18 people were injured at this RV park in Oklahoma City. Fortunately for him, he was alert and conscious. 
Firefighters fought through the storm to rescue a man trapped beneath a toppled RV. There was at least six inches of water flowing through this entire park, and the water was continually rising up around his head. Forecasters are predicting more storms across the southern plains through Saturday, and residents are warned to be ready. We live in Tornado Alley. Of course we have tornadoes. Knowing that is one thing. Picking up the pieces is another. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Bridge Creek, Oklahoma. Authorities say 1,500 homes and farms were damaged or destroyed in Bridge Creek, Oklahoma. It is going to be a while before you see Bluebell ice cream back on the store shelves in nine minutes. Why company leaders say they have a long way to go. And then how some people in Pulaski County say they wouldn't give up. They chased down the man they claim broke into a loved one's home. Tonight, the makers of Bluebell ice cream said it will be months before their products are back on the shelves. Bluebell recalled all of its products last month after investigators linked a series of listeria illnesses to them. Bluebell says cleaning and sanitizing all four of its production facilities, along with employee training, will take longer than first thought. The Food and Drug Administration said today inspection reports showed Bluebell had evidence of listeria in its Oklahoma plant as far back as two years ago. A suspected burglar is now in custody after relatives of the victim say they chased him down. June Gaskins says she saw someone breaking into a family member's home in Pulaski County this morning, so she and her uncle chased after the burglar. They chased the suspect in a neighbor in Russell County. The suspect then crashed his car, and Gaskins says she and her uncle held him there until police arrived. Well, my uncle asked him why he done it, and he said for the money. But when the law looked in his wallet, he had a lot of money. The suspected burglar was arrested, but police have not yet released his name. No one was injured. A teenager faces charges tonight after police say he shot his grandmother at an Estill County home. It happened this afternoon on Ida Grace Road near Irvin. State police say that 19-year-old Jordan Payne shot 59-year-old Dorothy Gregory in the arm and then drove off. Police say they later arrested Payne at his home in Madison County. He's charged with assault and wanton endangerment. Police say that Gregory was taken to UK hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police believe the driver of a tractor trailer was drunk when he crashed on Interstate 75 in Laurel County today. It happened this afternoon in the southbound lanes between London and Corbin. These are some eyewitness pictures from the scene. State police say 45 year old James Buell of Knoxville lost control and hit an embankment. They say he was taken to the hospital for minor injuries and later charged with DUI. The results are still being counted in today's elections in the United Kingdom, but exit polls suggest that Prime Minister David Cameron's Conservative Party fared much better than expected. It appears he will likely be able to form the next government even if his party fails just short of a majority in the parliament. A Lexington mother is giving back to an organization she says helped save her children's lives. Back in 2013, Michelle Bowdy's children were diagnosed with a rare medical condition that required bone marrow transplants. She says the organization called Be the Match helped find bone marrow donors for her children. So today, she set up a donor registry drive at Tates Creek Elementary. Only 30% of family members are matches. 70% um, do not have matched family members, so that's why we go through an organization like Be The Match. To become a possible bone marrow donor, you just have to fill out some paperwork and a simple swab of the cheek will put you in a database. We have more information on WKYT.com.